Welcome to Outlook, Word, and PowerPoint Top Keyboard Shortcuts. I'm Trainer Lori. So which keyboard shortcuts should we learn? Well, these are ones that everybody should use. If you use Outlook, Word, or PowerPoint on a regular basis, for the most part, they all work exactly the same, and sometimes just a little bit differently. So essentially, we want to learn how to perform actions quickly without using the mouse. First, how do we use the keyboard? Well, if I say Control Z and I show you with a capital Z, it really means that you hit Control and then Z simultaneously, starting with the Control. It does not mean that you make it a capital Z. Okay, I only do that so it, it's easy to see. So what does Control Z do? Well, it is undo. It is the same as using the undo buttons up on your Quick Access Toolbar. So it will quickly undo something. And Control Y which is right next to Z on the alphabet. It's a little memory device to help you remember it. That undoes an undo. In other words, it's called a redo. So if I did something I didn't want, I can bring it back again. You get 100 undos in Office 2010 until you hit Control S or Save. Once you do that, all bets are off. It starts all over again. Control C, uh, hopefully everybody knows that. Uh, you select the data that you want to copy and you hit Control C and it copies it puts it on the clipboard. However, if you use Control X, it will take it out of the original one. X looks like scissors, and so it's easy to remember it cuts it out. But again, it puts it on the clipboard. And how do we access it? How do we get it back? Control V, which is for Velcro. <laughs> Control V is Velcro or paste. And when you do that, you'll get some options for pasting as well. Some of my favorite tools that I use as I'm typing, Control B obviously makes it bold, Control I makes it italic, and Control U makes it underline. You would turn it on by clicking Control B before you type, and then as you type it will be bold, and then turn it off again, simply click it again. Control A, that means control it all, that's how I remember it. It will select all text and graphics in Word, so in the entire document it will select everything. In Outlook it will select all emails if you're in email. In PowerPoint, if you're in a, uh, the slide pane, it will select all the slides. If you're on a slide, it will select all the elements on the slide, uh, text boxes and graphics and everything. And if you're in a text box, it will select all the text in the text box. So it does different things depending on where you have clicked first, but Control A to control it all, to select it all. Control Home goes to the first page, or the slide, or email and Control N goes to the last one really fast. Control F is find, and um, I use that all the time, but the next one, Control H, I also use, but I don't use it as Control H, because it is also on the find. It just means to replace it. And how the heck are you supposed to remember? That's how I remember it's Control H. If you hit Alt once, then your keytip badges will appear, and all those letters are quick shortcuts to open whatever the, it happens to be. For example, Control or Alt H will open that tab, that, the home tab. And then once you're in there, it gives you a completely new set of uh, uh, keytip badges. And notice some of them are above and some are below. And so it gets a little confusing once you've opened a tab. Uh, so keep in mind, for example, this FF opens up the font, whereas the 1, 2, 3 opens up these uh, that uh, are just above it. Control S simply saves. It's like hitting the, the save button. So nothing actually happens. You don't see anything. It's happening in the background. If you want to save as, then you would hit F12. F12 is save as, so you get that option to give it a different name. Alt F4. This is a great one to know if you've lost your mouse and you don't know how to close a document. Uh, you simply uh, hit Alt F4 and it will close it quickly. Now, if it uh, ha if you hadn't saved it, or if you'd made changes, it will automatically ask you, do you want to save as? Do you want to change it? And so, uh, save as. Control Backspace will delete a full word at a time instead of a single character. So I hit Control Backspace and the whole word goes away. It's a quick one if you're going to be deleting. Control Arrow, and it can be the right arrow or the left arrow, and what it does is it changes where your cursor is. So you can see the cursor is in front of holding, and then if I hold uh, Control and use the arrows, it will just jump me uh, one word at a time instead of one character at a time. And Control Shift with the arrow key, again the right or left arrow, doesn't matter, uh, will select or highlight the text. Control P 
is for print. Hopefully you know that one. That's one of those that you should learn right away if you haven't. Page up right on the keyboard. It will move you to the uh, page just prior or the page just after, the one where you are, which is different from home or end. Those take you to the first or the last. This is one of the ones that most people don't know, and I have used this forever. I love this. Shift F3. Um, this toggles between different cases. In uh, Word and PowerPoint, they're just a little bit different, um, but uh, because you don't get title case in PowerPoint, which is exactly where I would use it, but you can see that it's lowercase versus title case versus uppercase, and Shift F3 will toggle you. What does that mean? That means you hold down Shift, and every time you hit F3, it will take you to one of the other options. Control E is one a lot of people don't know because it's not obvious. Notice centered has starts with C, but that's taken. Control C, of course, is copy. So the second letter is E, and that creates a centered uh, in in the uh, justification. Control L is left justified, and Control R is right justified. And those are obvious, and then the full justified is Control J, but that only works in Word. And if you do it in uh, Outlook, you'll find it opens a, a journal entry. Shift Enter. This is one of those that um, are really tricky. So you can see where my cursor would be here just before the O, and if I use Shift Enter, it creates a line break. Now it looks like a paragraph break, but it's not. Uh, to see the difference, I would go to Home and then look at my um, uh, View Paragraph Breaks, and you can see that it's a little different. Here, This one has the arrow, and this one has the paragraph. That means that this is just Enter and that it has the paragraph break with all the formatting information. So if you want th these two to be formatted the same, except just break it here, then use the Shift Enter. But if you want to change the formatting between paragraphs, then you use the Enter. Control Enter, again one of my favorites, that means at the end of wherever you've clicked uh, uh, Control Enter, it will create a page break. And if you look at the see what it looks like. It, it actually says page break and it puts, puts your text on the top of the next page. That's great if you're, uh, if you're used to hit enter, 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 trying to get it to go to the next page and then you added more data in here. Oops! Now all of a sudden your page break starts lower than you expect. This always makes the page break at the top of the next page. Control 1 is for line spacing. Uh, control 1 is single line spacing. Control 2 is double line spacing. There's also a control 3 for triple line spacing, but this is my favorite. Control 5 for 1.5 line spacing, which is a little smaller than 2, but you still have room to write if you want to uh, put some notes in there. It doesn't take up as man, uh, many pages when you're printing. Control bracket. This is one that nobody knows about, and this is one of my favorites as well. Now it works just a little bit different in PowerPoint and Word. Uh, Word and Outlook work the same, but in PowerPoint, when you use control bracket, it will jump you as m much as it will show here. For example, 20 will jump you larger to 24, and then 28, etc. However, if you're in Word, it only jumps or grows by one point which can be very useful, especially when you're making a headline, and you want the headline to fit, and you don't really care how many points it is. You just want it to fit. But you also have the option to use the other bracket. Now, notice these are square brackets, not round or squiggly. <laughs> and you can see that the closed bracket makes it larger, and the open bracket makes it smaller. Control K creates a hyperlink. You get that link? <laughs> that K sound helps you remember that it is Control K, and that opens up your hyperlink so that you can put in what text you want. You uh, can copy and paste uh, whatever um, hyperlink that you have and paste it in here under the address. So in this case, the word Office shows here has a hyperlink that goes to this. Very convenient. Love that. Alt Tab. A lot of you are familiar with Alt Tab. If uh, the boss is walking by and you've got a game playing. <laughs> you hit Alt-Tab and it'll move you to the next uh, screen, so it won't show what you're actually doing. However, in uh, if you have Windows 7, you have another option, and this is the Windows button with Tab, and it creates like a parade of all your uh, open applications. And it's kind of cool, and you can see them just a little bit better than on the Alt-Tab. That's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please like it, and we'll see you next time. Bye!